Welcome to Amusement Sparks, the theme park design show. My name's Andrew Spawn. I'm your host, and my guest today is a very special person, a huge fan of what we're talking about today. Who are you and what are you doing here? Uh, I'm Jonathan O'Roselion, and I am here to make the coolest Bioshock amusement park in the history of the world, which is very easy because there's none. So there are, <laughs> Currently, there are zero, so already the first is, is the coolest, for sure. Awesome. So, um, yeah, you do stuff on YouTube, is that correct? I do. I am. I make stuff over at uh, the Make Stuff oh. channel on YouTube, uh, where I mostly do video essays, but I'm getting into just, like, it's just general creative goodness, like, just <laughs> inspiring people, go, like, just celebrating good art cool stuff i just talk about stuff i like like amusement parks I, dude i'm so with you on that like um one of my instagram accounts that's more like my life's goal like what mm -hmm. i'm trying to do with everything is like helping people go from being what's it say the the bio or whatever says go from audience to amateur to creator and nice. it's like the same Perfect. same idea yeah. like yeah yeah exactly. appreciate stuff and then you can actually start to do it yourself yeah. and and that makes you appreciate it even more. So it's, yeah, art isn't just there to be consumed. I think it's there to be inspirational. and Yeah. Definitely, definitely, it's, definitely. It's so cool. I love it. Awesome, man. So what what do you like about the Bioshock series? And um, maybe what is it for someone who's never heard of it? We'll right. kind of assume people have played the games, but if not, what's, right. what is Bioshock? So it got a little complicated with the uh, sequel that sort of just changed what Bioshock is. But the first Bioshock <laughs> was this game where... Uh, you go into an under underwater city, and it's like this city that's supposed to be like a haven from all regulation and all government, and just go create whatever you want and do whatever you want. And uh, but that inevitably led to that city's destruction, and everyone became like super powered drug addicts, and you end up in that city after it's all uh, been self imploded. And, uh, and you get to fight a bunch of people with cool superpowers and stuff. And so that was the first game. Uh, and, oh, and it takes place in, like, 1960 or whatever. Uh, and the, then with the third game, Bioshock Infinite, they're like, well, now it takes place in 1912, and it's in the sky. There's just, like, a floating city, and it's this city where it's, like, pretty much the same sort of concept of free of government and everything but uh but it's like hyper regulated where it's like we're super conservative and stuck up and uh and we worship the founding fathers and all this crazy stuff uh but it's always it's always you going to this city that's like a scientific haven uh, and super advanced for the time, but it's always a period piece, and it's always very secluded from the rest of the world, and you're always uh, getting shot at a bunch and getting cool powers to use. So yeah, yeah, it's it's that's an amazing description. You went into like every <laughs> part of it, but yeah, it's it's definitely a very video gamey video game. You know, you have like all these yeah. different superpowers and all kinds of like unrealistic things happen. And I mean, one of them takes place in the city at the bottom of the ocean. The other one takes place in the city in the clouds. Like, those aren't real things, right. but within those bizarre sci-fi video game-ish settings, like, they explore some really deep philosophical yeah. and political stuff. Like, yeah. these games are surprisingly deep, considering mm -hmm. that they are just, like, video gamey video games. Yeah, They're, which, like, very powerful, yeah. Yeah, which didn't really... Those were one of the... It was probably the first video game that that occurred to me, because when, I, when it first came out, it came out the day before my birthday in 2007, uh, and I had to, like lie about my age to buy it at walmart i remember the guy the guy uh went out and got it out of the case and everything and in my head i was like oh i know exactly how i'm gonna lie to this guy it's gonna be great he's totally gonna buy it and uh and he's like oh yeah are you are you 17 and i was like this is the day before i turned 16 or whatever and i was like yep yeah i'm a i'm a i'm a senior because that's what you nice. say when you're 17 yeah. is i'm a oh, senior for sure. oh yeah and we'll by that <laughs> but luckily luckily uh he worked at walmart and didn't care about his job at all so he was just like yes. just okay sure dude as long as you got money dude but I, I, for someone who loves like electronic departments of every store wherever we are i'm like mm -hmm. i'm going to electronics meet you later 
Walmart is just, it's always been kind of sad back there. Um, the, the local Walmart where I'm from, like, there was this just mummy of a human being working back there. She was, like, 100 years old when I was five, and she still works there in the electronics department. Oh, my god! And she's really sweet, but she just doesn't know anything that's going on yeah, around her. how do you keep up with... Oh. Oh, boy. Good yeah, it's places. rough. I mean... That's where the next. Job, uh, that's where the next Bioshock's but... taking place. Is in the electronics <laughs> department of Walmart. That isolated. Uh, that it's free of the government and law, and it's all chaos. And wow, it's really it's good. something you can you can grasp the concept of really easy. Like, oh yeah, an underwater city. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Let's get deep with this. Like that's how the Bioshock thing kind of sets it up and then knocks it down. Mm-hmm. Same idea here. Like you know the Walmart electronics department. Well, what if? This crazy political <laughs> philosophical you got the, you got stuff. The setting. It's perfect. <laughs> I don't know. Halfway into the first game, maybe two thirds into the first game, there's this crazy twist, and it just breaks your brain. And I remember being just this 16 year old idiot that was just like, "I'm. I didn't know video games could be just stuff that was more than shooting," and it was really cool. Yeah, and I mean, the genre of first-person shooter, which technically yeah. you could say these are first-person like action games or whatever, but mm-hmm. there is shooting, there are guns. It's a first-person shooter, but yeah, the, the storyline is so compelling. So another part of that same day that I bought it, uh, I it was the day after it came out, and all I had heard was like everyone was freaking out about it and thought it was so good. And uh, so I put it in, and I started playing it, and it's like it starts out where your plane crashes and you're in the ocean and you're next to this lighthouse and you swim to this lighthouse and it's all dark and atmospheric and stuff. But I didn't know it was a scary game. So I, it it did not dawn on me as just like, Oh, this is kind of cool. Like I was not expecting anything scary to happen. And Mm -hmm. so then you get into this like submarine and it takes you down. And then you see this like gorgeous underwater city with like skyscrapers, but I don't know what you would call them surface yeah, w- scrapers i guess i don't know i guess but they don't go through the surface do yeah. they they're like it's uh, it, but underwater sky yeah, water <laughs> scrapers. uh that's our first ride but uh sea scrapers Ooh, i like it uh thank you <clears throat> but so you like yeah it's like i was like oh this is so cool this is beautiful i'm loving this and then you like your your submarine like docks and like uh you raise above the water and there's suddenly there's this guy there that immediately gets murdered by this like scarred face like drug addled uh terrifying screaming woman and then she starts like sniffing you out and she's like is someone here and stuff and then like jumps on your submarine and starts attacking you and i just had to pause the game and had this like inner battle of like do am i am i gonna play this game i just (laughs) i just did the best lie in the world and acted my butt Mm -hmm. off and you earned it yeah and i spent all my birthday money on this and like and i i can't i'm so bad at scary games like i i'm just so bad at scary games but uh but i was like i'm just i'm gonna power through it (laughs) because it's just because it had me hooked literally five minutes into it and i was so obsessed with it so when you start talking about this from like a theme park perspective there's a lot of stuff like if you wanted to do um I don't know if you're trying to aim at the audience who played the games, you're probably aiming at, you know, a, an M-rated audience. Right. Um, but there are a lot of parts of, of Rapture, which is the under underwater city. And what's the, the sky one's called Columbia? Is that right? Yeah, yeah, Columbia. Yeah, those two cities are both beautiful places. Like mm-hmm. if, if it was a real place, kids would be welcome there. In fact, there are kids at one point in time that live in both of those places. Yeah. Um, it's not like the location itself is a... Is, uh, mature it's just all the crazy stuff right. that's happened there since like the civil war uh all that kind of stuff yeah not the not the u.s civil war there's another civil war that happens yeah. Yeah, yeah. in rapture and that's kind of what causes a lot of the mm-hmm. the really crazy stuff that happens um so yeah without going into too much of the story there are a lot of different locations mm-hmm. under the sea and also in the sky that we could explore here do you want to include both of those areas you want to do rapture and yeah Columbia? so this is this is how this is how i imagine the entrance of the park is literally just two uh, lighthouses. And you pick which lighthouse you want to go to, and one will send you down to Rapture, and one will send you up to Columbia. Because that's how both both games start out with, you go into a lighthouse, and one has a submarine, and the other one has, like, a rocket ship that sends you into the sky. I love that, dude. That's great. And, like, 
obviously we don't have to actually make rapture underwater like that right. seems impractical i don't know how they did it back in you know the 40s or 50s or whenever that was built right. but for us still it's impossible really yeah. so making it just kind of feel like that you know you get into the lighthouse and then there's like a four-dimensional or 4d theater mm -hmm. that makes you feel like you're going underwater actually you know what um, i was thinking really was cool. uh so one thing you'll learn about me real quick is how obsessed I am with theme parks. Have you been on the, uh, they have at, what is it, The Sea in Epcot now. They have like a Little Nemo ride that's... I have not. I've heard of a kind of similar ride that they have at Tokyo Disney Sea, and I'm not sure if it's based on Finding Nemo or if it's 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, but... Right, I know there's right. a really cool ride. I've watched like a ride video of, yeah. of that at Tokyo Disney Sea. That's actually like a better example because what they do for that is they have this, uh, they put you down into a submarine and then you are looking out of this like porthole that uh, you're going through this underwater area, but you're not actually underwater. All they do is they run water and bubbles up through the, uh, the glass between you and this room that's like so they have animatronics of fish swimming by and stuff but it's none of it's actually underwater so yeah if we could do like some sort of some sort of like matte painting like force perspective where it looks like you're going into this massive city of rapture underwater but just have the bubbles coming up through the windows just totally yeah. rip off tokyo dude yeah the the disney imagineers get paid a lot of money to come up with this stuff <laughs> yeah, just... i'm getting paid i'm only getting paid a thousand dollars to be on this podcast that's the, that's the price right that's what we agree that's on? uh yeah that's the going going rate <laughs> oh man i'm a very eccentric thousand air uh <laughs> so, um... i'd like to see the uh rapture you build with your with your thousand air cash Dude, I wanted to do a like a spin-off of this show or whatever, an intro to the show that was thousand dollar theme parks, which is like just oh. low budget country bumpkin versions of mm -hmm. theme parks. Because you can do cool oh stuff for gosh. low budget. I mean, it's not amusement parks level where it's like limitless budget, limitless technology. But mm -hmm. there's this but yeah, guy in like fun... Russia or something. I don't remember where it is. Where he does he like he's been building his own like theme park rides for years and years yes. and like his own roller coasters and stuff. And I would, I, like... I don't want to go there. <laughs> it sounds terrifying. I'm going to die. Is there. it the one where, where they're like mostly man powered? Like you kind of yeah. wind it up yourself. Yeah. I think that's in Italy maybe, but yeah, I've seen that guy's attractions. Like some of them look really cool, but then again, the fact that one human being made them, yeah. I hope he has really good insurance, but uh, it, yeah. it's cool. It's like whimsical and magical, but I don't know if it fits in this century very well. You know, right, it was right, the 1700s right. Seventeen hundreds or something. See, that's why yeah, I assumed sure. Russia. I feel like you could get away with that in Russia, where it's just like, oh yeah, no. As long as you serve Good vodka point. there, then you're you're set. That's allowed. Classic. Wow, that's great. Um, thank you to our five listeners who live in Russia, by the way. <laughs> oh um, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I see you guys on my statistics. It's exciting because I never played Infinite, which, mm -hmm. like you said, is a prequel set forty years before the Bioshock. Right. The other two Bioshock games. Is there a connection there? Like, Andrew Ryan, the guy who created the Rapture Underwater area, mm -hmm. um, supposedly he, the character, came from, from Russia, wow, coincidentally, yeah. moved to the U.S., um, trying to pursue this kind of, like, liberal... Liberal? No, I don't, what's it's, the word? It, Liber, libertarian. Yeah, very... Well, yeah, uh, Ayn Rand Utopia. is what the... Yeah. Because he's Andrew Ryan, that's what, like... His name's Andrew Ryan. Yeah. I, I think that's... So... I didn't notice that until, like, recently, and I was like, oh, my God, how did I not notice that <laughs> yeah, years ago? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Andrew Ryan. Yeah. So whatever whatever political belief it is where you just hate homeless people. <laughs> and that's the one yeah, he is. He wants a, to build a place where the strong don't have to be concerned with the weak. Because mm -hmm. he like calls the weak and, you know, the people who need assistance, they're like parasites on society. Yeah. So he's trying to find this this place that's totally different than that. And so he builds his own civilization after like the kind of socialist movement starts happening in the United States and um I don't know. Then I didn't. I didn't know if there was some connection or if he took some inspiration from Comstock, who started Columbia. Right. Because you have to see, like, if Columbia had happened and been a real part of our history, that someone mm -hmm. who started something like Rapture might have been inspired by that. Right. But I don't know if there's some connection there. I don't. I. There? I don't think they ever specifically make a uh, uh, connection. But here's. I think canonically it's like parallel universes which is something oh. especially in like the dlc and stuff they dive into a lot is like because yeah. that's uh elizabeth the 
second main character in Infinite, she has this ability to create tears that take you between dimensions and stuff and, like, alternate worlds. Like, I remember the original teaser trailer for Bioshock Infinite. It was so cool because she opens this tear and you're in, like, this floating city or whatever. And, uh... And all of a sudden, you're in uh, France, and the you're in front of this movie theater, and the marquee says, like, in French, uh, Revenge of the Jedi, instead of Return of the Jedi. So it's like some alternate universe where we got the <laughs> original title, Revenge of the Jedi. And, oh, that's cool. Yeah, so it's... it's So it, it's, it's literally, like, it's statistically, there's been a universe where Andrew Ryan was inspired by Comstock, but I don't think it was ever specifically... Uh, mm-hmm. stated okay cool but there is i like that there is like there is canonically like uh actually i think what it is is because in uh columbia they start uh taking ideas from rapture because they find a tear to rapture or whatever and wow. uh and that's where like there's the big uh songbird this like big mechanical bird thing that's protecting elizabeth is apparently yeah. also based off of the technology that the uh the big daddies from the first Bioshock is. Yeah, uh, that's the vibe I always got from that that yeah. robotish machine. I'm like, is there a person in there? Because it kind of feels like a big daddy where it mm-hmm. feels robotic, but then you find out over time there's actually like prisoners or various other test subjects that yeah. are like manipulated and like stuck in those machines. Mm-hmm. It's crazy. Yeah. So yeah, there's there's Dude, always been this cool. big connection, but it's usually like uh, parallel universe stuff, which is something that I want to play with in one of the rides. So. Heck yeah, man! And we could even do that for the whole the whole theme park if we wanted to, like, because mm-hmm. the the different places are kind of like the time periods are different, right? They're yeah. forty years apart. So putting them next door and saying you can go in this one or that one mm-hmm. doesn't really make sense within our linear understanding of time. Right. But if you know Elizabeth's powers are enabling people to yeah. travel freely between these, we can explore that exactly that a lot. Yeah. And there's there's a lot of cool storytelling stuff that can go on there. If we want to make um, an area that's like the kid park, mm-hmm. we could say, well, here is the the timeline where the Civil War never <laughs> happened in Rapture. Yeah, and, uh, you know the good times are still going, and there's you know still swing music playing on like every street corner. I don't know what this metaphor right. is but things are happy still yeah and that's the kitty area they can just run around and like get food and mm-hmm. ride the little kid rides you know what yeah. i will make the argument that uh that so have you been on the uh have you been to the harry potter park have you i have never been there i've uh done extensive research on it right there. so i will i will go on record as saying uh the scariest ride i have ever been on in my life is the hogwarts ride <laughs> in Harry wow. Potter it is like I was getting on there and I was like oh I'm gonna fly a broom and it's gonna be magical and whatever first thing out of the gate you are face to face with a dragon that's breathing fire and then <laughs> you immediately go into the forest with the giant spider and all these spiders start coming down around you and then right after that there's dementors in your face like sucking oh my- literally sucking <laughs> the happiness out of you and <laughs> and then like right after that uh you're back in the great hall and everyone's clapping everyone's like boy that was fun i was like that was the scary i don't want to i never wanted to meet a dementor what dream do you think you're making come true here wow Uh, and so is is there a storyline for that or is it just like here's the cool stuff that happened in the movie it's it's literally like i think it's sort of that goblet of fire scene where it's like uh harry's trying to like outrun the dragon and get his egg or whatever and like but yeah. while you're out running that dragon you run into all these spiders and dementors and stuff and it is it is a nightmare <laughs> it's so scary like my the the picture i went to see the picture after the ride and the my face during the from the uh picture they took during the ride was just like this like terrified like gritted teeth <laughs> where it was just me trying to pretend that this is all cool and i'm not secretly just like wow just urinating all over my pants so you know what and it's weird because as a kid i would have loved that like i loved the even the spider-man ride scared me so much when like uh there's like scream jumps on the car and she's like slashing at you and stuff and i'm like this is the coolest thing in the world so i feel like if we're if we keep it sort of pg-13 like younger kids are gonna love that even if we keep it around like a haunted mansion level for some rides uh-huh. and stuff like it, it i feel yeah. like kids would absolutely love that dude haunted mansion is one of the most like beloved classic disney rides ever and it, it's got some pretty dark stuff like it goes some places if you dig yeah. into the lore 
So yeah, yeah, you're totally right. That's a great uh, source you've cited there. There is a DLC that is where the big crossover happens for uh, Bioshock Infinite, where it's like yeah. an alternate dimension where you're playing your character from Bioshock Infinite in Rapture before Rapture went crazy. And cool. so you actually get to walk around Rapture, but it is like the beginning of the Civil War where Andrew Ryan has like sunk like i think it's like a department store he pretty much like put all the people he didn't like in a department store and like <laughs> sunk it and now all the crazy stuff's happening in this sunken department store and like wow. the rest of rapture is totally fine so i think it would be awesome to have that to be sort of our world of rapture where it's just like it's not terrifying to walk around in all the time but you can just like yeah. do certain rides that get into the terrifying stuff but just being able yes. to walk around like post or pre-collapse uh rapture and seeing all the shops and all that which actually you know what speaking of shops because i know you like uh like scavenger hunt sort of things heck uh, yeah man i was thinking one of my favorite things about uh bioshock is the like voxophones and the different like recordings you can find in different places mm -hmm. so i think it would be so cool to just have like like a phone like an app on your phone or something like you might have like at a museum or something where if you find a voxophone somewhere just like scan it with your phone and then you can hear like the recording from that and start yes. to like piece together we could even have like a uh, like information on like have one guy being like oh, i locked up my note to self i locked up this thing in my safe and the passwords two three six eight or like something that you might actually run into yeah. with the game or like oh that's great uh Actually, you know what? I'm just thinking of this. It would be so cool. So there's this part in uh, Diagon Alley that's like whatever the scary part of Diagon Alley is from the <laughs> books that has like all the, if you want to buy poisons and stuff, you go to this area. They actually yeah. have that part at the park that's like super tucked away and like, like I barely, I almost missed it when I was there. And like you go wow. back in there and it's like this dark shady alley where you can go like talk to trolls and stuff. But I was thinking, is that, uh, Nocturne Alley? Yeah, 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 Nocturne yeah. Alley. Cool. Uh, That's I was awesome. thinking it'd be so cool if there's like a voxophone or something that was like, the password to get into this place is like, uh, Ryan sucks or something. <laughs> <laughs> and and then like have it be that like a uh, old like uh, speakeasy style like you know, someone yes. opens the thing and like what's the password and like you can go into this restaurant or shop or whatever if you found that voxophone that Dude, gives you that password. That's incredible. I love that so much and like you could have you could tell so many different stories like that's the one of yeah. the main storytelling mechanisms in this series is like you pick up a little like basically a snippet of audio of someone telling part of their life and so it feels very diegetic like this mm -hmm. isn't something that you had to find it's something you discovered and so you get a yeah. little bit more lore but if you don't care about it you can just breeze through and not pick up any of those yeah things. it's actually a lot like, like the uh the yeah. finding the places to use the wand in uh harry potter where it's but it's yep. just like uh, some recording of some lady being like, hey, did you hear that there, did you hear that, like, if you go to this place and click on this brick, then this, like, uh, crazy thing will happen? What's that all about? And then you go to that place <laughs> and click on, like, push on that brick and, like, some crazy thing happens and it would just be like... I love that. Do Dude, the wands so without the wands. Things. Yeah, that sounds amazing. Like, do it, do it Rapture style or Columbia style. Yeah. I love that so much. That's super cool. Um, and then you could, like, uh, kind of tease upcoming new attractions like as Ooh, things change out yeah. seasonally you could have like you know I heard this thing's coming to town or, <laughs> or I, I've heard that um, you know Mr. Ryan's going to be demolishing this <laughs> this building next year or you know that kind of right. stuff you could like you oh, could kind of leak out so the news so cool to have just like revolving <laughs> voxophone things that'd be uh -huh. such a good way to have people like coming back and like yeah. changing stuff without actually having to put in the money to change stuff <laughs> Now that I think of it, the cool thing about Rapture would be the fact that it would be like an indoor amusement park. The, the yeah, least... the whole thing has to yeah. be indoors. It would. I mean, it would crazy. sort of be like the sea in Epcot, where it's like pretty much an aquarium. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're right. And you could do um, kind of like thin aquariums yeah. to uh, take up the walls, and then have a, a painted backdrop behind yeah. that, or even like a video, a layer of massive bubbles. like video screen backdrop or something Dude. like that. But you could yeah. totally do like. Oh, it would be so cool to like make it so you're in a building 
and like you see like an, like the backdrop would be like whatever adjacent building and then you could see stuff going on like in that building or something through the windows that's and stuff. That's so cool. That sounds amazing. That's yeah. going to look so cool and like the the whole art style of of Rapture is like very art deco. Mm -hmm. Um it's just beautiful. Everything is like gilded and the fonts are really yeah. great and yeah, it's a oh. it's an oddly like twenties style for a sixties place, but it's set in the sixties. Yeah, you're right. It's it's, it's gorgeous. I love that. I love that aesthetic so much. Uh -huh. uh, and then having like shops that like because if it would be set in the sixties, like having that sort of the the actors that are the uh, clerks and wait waiters and stuff are all like pretending like they're from the sixties in Rapture. And I love that That's immersion cool. of like. Uh, uh -huh like the haunted mansion gift shop is like everyone in there is so dedicated to uh to their craft and to that uh fiction yeah and i would just love to because that's the thing that like that's why i wanted to do this at for this podcast in the first place is i've never become more immersed in a game so immediately than these games mm -hmm. and it never felt so fleshed out and real and like just like the fact that Rapture, like, we literally described it as this, like, Civil War destroyed, like, drug addict filled city. And it's just like, I would love to go there. It sounds <laughs> so cool. Sign me you up. You got a point. It is, it is a game where, like, within the first five minutes, it's like, okay, I'm going to somewhere that's utterly sci-fi. It's mm -hmm. not like playing most first-person shooters where it's like, maybe you're on a different continent than you're used to. But you're still on planet Earth, modern day. Right. blah 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 like you kind of know what to expect it's like here you go underwater it's like wait 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 i've never done this except for in echo the dolphin and <laughs> I, this is a first person shooter what am i supposed to do underwater <laughs> um so it, t it immediately takes you uh, like sweeps you off your feet and mm -hmm. i think the same thing will happen here at the theme park even if you've never played the games mm -hmm. if it's like you go in this lighthouse and then you suddenly are like submerged under the water and you find this like beautiful rapture below you. yeah yeah, oh, it's, it's so cool, simple. and you're immediately in it. Like you're you're connected. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, working in this place, I feel like you would have to get into character, and that would be so much more fun than just like working a regular department store. It's like I work at that mm -hmm. that department store in Rapture that you know, um, you know, for this every summer it like gets halfway submerged, and I uh, you know get to wear <laughs> like boots to work every day. Um, yeah, I don't know. It would add a lot to the the employees' experience. I think make things a lot more fun than just like I'm stocking shelves. It's like mm -hmm. no, I'm stocking shelves in Rapture in character. <laughs> yeah, that sounds way more fun. In Bioshock Infinite, one of the first things you do is like you walk through this sort of fair or carnival like area that has booths and has like shooting gallery games and stuff. And mm -hmm. I want us to do um, like a fair games uh, area in Colombia, but make it actually fun because <laughs> i feel like because yeah real yeah like real no one wants to do great. the like oh i'm gonna throw this ring on a bottle this is the best <laughs> like you're in a city in the sky like let's do something that's like actually cool so i want to figure out how to like okay take yeah. those like amity island style like fair games and make it fun because i don't know how <laughs> I'm sure that one of the first things to do, if, if people were designing those games in a modern day with modern, like, game design aesthetics mm -hmm. and whatnot, those games are made to, like, rip you off. It's kind of like the claw game. Mm -hmm. Like, those are pretty much impossible unless you go, like, certain places are like, here's one that you actually win. Like, usually right. the ones, if they just have candy and cheap stuff in there, right. you're going to win every time. Right. It's just designed for the player to win something, mm -hmm. whereas normally it's, like, designed to take your money. So I think lowering the difficulty or making them so they're not such tricks yeah. would be more enjoyable. You know, if, if you can use your, like, beer pong skills or whatever to actually <laughs> win something instead of, like, oh, yeah, but you can't see that they're all angled on the inside, so your ball always bounces out. Like, mm -hmm. if, if it's um, a, a thing where you can actually get better at it mm -hmm. and, like, win with some frequency if you're good at it, I think that would, that would go a long way. Yeah. Um, and lowering the price, maybe if they're free, yeah, that, that's one way to get people to play your games a lot more instead of like, <laughs> hey kid, come over here and play this cool game. It's five dollars. Like, well, wait, what? <laughs> Why? The Don't more you it. talk about it, the more I just hate fair games. <laughs> like, <laughs> Seriously, it's, it's I, such I, a I racket. I haven't done those. In, they're such a racket, and they're not even that fun. No. The the easiest one to win is um, you point the little squirt gun and you shoot it in the hole. Right. 
and that's a game about pushing two buttons and keeping your hands still. <laughs> it's like, here, like, pay us $3 so you can throw a basketball like you do at home. <laughs> Gosh, what a ripoff. Oh, Seriously true. Uh, so one thing I just remembered about uh, Infinite is, like, in that fair, the part of the booths are, like... Uh, are testing out vigors which are like the things you drink to give you different superpowers uh and so there's one that's like uh that's like possession and it lets you like control robots and stuff mechanical things so i was thinking it would be cool like if it wasn't like a you win thing but like you get to try out this superpower at this booth Mm -hmm. uh and sort of like uh we could even do something where it's like here use this possession and step up to this and like uh you know cast possession or whatever and now you can control this robot and then have it like uh uh sort of like a like a mocap thing where it's just like Uh even like a you know almost like xbox connect technology where like you can move and this robot in front of you moves in the same way and be like oh look at that's the possession working and just like fun little games like that Dude, so many things. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yes, that's a great idea. And trying out the like the like superpower things, mm-hmm. right? They go by kind of different names and different mm-hmm. in the different like worlds. But um, that's definitely a big part of their culture. It's like kind of normal to just give yourself superpowers. Like that's just something. Like we keep talking about the kind of drug addiction thing. Like people have these kind of almost stem cell type things that they inject in themselves all the time, yeah, and it's yeah. kind of normal. It's like advertised as being for self defense. Yeah. Um, so instead of, like, carrying a gun, although you can carry guns, a lot of people can just, like, you can just, like, shoot fire or whatever, shoot yeah. electricity out of your hands. It's, like, it's pretty wild stuff. Yeah. And it's hard to give our park guests that experience in real life. <laughs> See, that's what but I'm trying to think of. You know what? Yeah. There's, there's, there's the one that's called, like, Bucking Bronco that you also get to try out in the thing where it's literally, like, everything you aim it in, like, a direction and everything in that direction, like, raises four feet in the air or five feet in the air. It would be so cool to have it as, like... Uh, like let's say so it's like this booth and you have the barker or whatever like step right up try this out uh and in the game it's like you have to find where the guy dressed up as a devil is hiding in this room by like making him levitate and so you can literally have it where like you know the kid like casts it in this direction and the barker there is just like hits some you know uh remote control and just have everything sort of animatronically or like through strings or whatever just rise up yeah. to make it seem like you had that ability to make everything rise up and just like oh, fun cute. stuff i think yeah. we made carnival games cool i think, we <laughs> I think did. so and and i think the way we could theme it story-wise is like um let's imagine these these uh you know plasmids these abilities mm-hmm. are not quite to market yet and this this is kind of like a way of like maybe the uh carnival is sponsored by you know, right, whatever manufacturer. Uh, Think, I think. Think Industries is the one that makes it in, like, Columbia and stuff. In Columbia. That makes yeah. sense. Um, so we could have it, like, sponsored in, like, here's the kind of things you'll be able to do. Try it out. Mm-hmm. Um, here's a short-term dose or whatever. And then we could kind of control it. Like you said, it could be, like, an interactive connect kind of measurement thing. Mm-hmm. And some of these, honestly, are pretty simple. If we're, if we're relying on the user to, like, point their hand in a direction and then something yeah. happens in that direction... You could just have a line of, like, infrared beams going yeah, up, yeah. and then when their hand crosses it, okay, trigger that corner over there because they yeah. crossed this point here. Like, technologically, I don't think it'd be that difficult yeah, to do Yeah, it would be either. a lot easier than those wands that take 50 <laughs> swings or just, like, furiously... <laughs> oh, boy. Well, it's Leviosa, not Leviosa. <laughs> oh, that's it. So, you gotta get it just right. Boy, um, But I... in these, a lot of it could just be technological stuff. Like, the yeah. robot, like you were saying, could basically be a smart mirror that's, like, detecting your facial features movements and then replicating it like like snapchat or something yeah yeah yeah. Um, you have a a a mirrored robot version of you that's like oh look the robot's doing whatever you do Mm because you're trying out this plasmid and if it feels a little hokey and the adults are like this is all fake Mm -hmm. it's a carnival and they're trying to sell you something in the world so it kind of makes sense that maybe that's not how it really work but Mm -hmm. it's their best attempt to try to lure the kids in and get them to buy their their drugs Mm -hmm. so (laughs) so what they're doing they sponsored the carnival (laughs) this is why it's all for by the it way, kind of fits within the world. There's this. Speaking of that, I didn't even remember it until I played it earlier today. There's this one, like, there's an advertisement for cigarettes for kids. 
in Colombia at the carnival part. And I think it would be so funny to like have that as like a like candy cigarettes as like one of the things you could win at the carnival games or something. I like just... that. Dude, yeah, just giving away like just like the claw game, you know, give out yeah. the free stuff. Like give out candy or like stickers or like the dumb little stuff. Like mm-hmm. instead of shooting the basketball to try to win a bas- basketball jersey that actually costs the park five dollars or yeah. something. It's like every time you try you get something that costs us five cents. Or probably much less than that actually. Yeah. But, giving out little things or even if it's just additional audio dialogue unlocks that they get Mm -hmm. like come on people want that yeah 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 oh that'd be great that's really cool if we're using like a smartphone app Mm -hmm. um if you go to the carnival you win the game the carnival person in front of that game doesn't know your personal history they don't know if you're a season pass holder and you only need one more audio log to get them all right or if it's your first game there so it could just be like the the person in charge of the ride or whatever it's like okay give reward and it just randomly gives you one of the uh, oh, that'd be missing great. audio logs you don't have. Except for maybe limited edition ones that you can only get in certain certain mm-hmm. attractions or whatever. But yeah, you could structure it in a way that it's rewarding to everyone, not just newbies or not just yeah. pros. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Rapture would be good for all of our shopping stuff. Yep. Like I agree. Fancy clothes and ridiculous stuff like that. And uh, and Columbia would be good for the carnival games and stuff like that. Yeah. There's, there's a nice um, difference between the kind of light side and bright sunniness, like you're mm-hmm. literally in the clouds, yeah. um, connected to the sun versus rapture where there is like no natural sunlight. Yeah. And I, that's one of the main things that like really early on in the lore kind of started the, the downfall of rapture was people were getting like really sad because they can never see the sunlight. And that's right. like a real thing for humans, even in winter on planet Earth. <laughs> we have a lot of trouble in the winter, like yeah. depression wise. Um living under the the bottom of the ocean like it would be way worse down there so um i think you wouldn't want to stay in rapture for that long i I don't know if we want to replicate it totally completely like that um make it all of it kind of dark and depressing and feel like you're Mm -hmm. actually there or be like uh this is a rapture theme park everyone like just treat it like it's a theme park and don't take it too seriously yeah i don't know i I feel like uh hmm that's tricky because i I, I feel like if yeah if I'm in like a, in a way it's, it, it is pretty like spot on like to being in a, an aquarium or something where it's just mm-hmm. like, I could, I could probably spend, you know, five, six hours or whatever, uh, hanging yeah. out down there. I definitely wouldn't want to live down there, but like, right. <laughs> but like I can, I can see that being like, cause I really, I really do want that feeling of like, I want to create that appearance of like, we just went underwater and we are yeah. stuck underwater and. Dude, I agree. And, and I think if we have these two parks mm-hmm. and we're expecting each park guest to go to both of them yeah. on every visit, then that's totally fine. You know, they'll spend half their day getting a sunburn and half of the day enjoying their air conditioning. Yeah, exactly. So I think that's totally fair. Yeah. And the employees, maybe we'll want to rotate them out so they don't get right. seasonal depressive disorder all year long. <laughs> um, I don't know. If we put it somewhere hot, good. then it's like people are going to love being down in Rapture. <laughs> Just yeah, you're right. Like you're right. Out of that sun. And I wonder if we could have any attractions where you actually, like, get some water on you. There are various points where, like, you know, uh, windows start to break. And, like, there's um, a part in Bioshock 2 where you actually get sucked outside. Right, 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 right. We can't right. do that to our park guests, probably. <laughs> yeah. Wait. I was thinking about that. Unless we want to have a scuba Big Daddies attraction. Oh, my which, gosh. For the, for the listener, the Big Daddies are the kind of mascots of the series. Yeah. These big, um, they look like those old-timey... Um, it's so like a diving oh, man. bell. Scuba divers. Yeah. The diving bell. Yeah. yeah. Like the Scooby Doo villain. The. Um, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That guy. The glowy that face, guy. dude. Um, yeah. But they have these huge like drills attached to their hands, and they're pretty cool. They make this like scary cry. Like a uh, whale. Yeah. Whale call kind of sound. It's pretty creepy stuff. But they can walk around freely outside. Like they go around like maintenance people, like mm-hmm. fixing stuff. So if we wanted to have a kind of trial uh scuba attraction that would be really we cool could do that just be like one It'd of those things crazy. where like even where you like pick a random person i remember in the uh in uh hollywood studios they had the uh like back lot tour or whatever and they'd have one person volunteer to pretty much get a ton of water dumped on them so nice. like each for each show i think it would be really cool for where it's just like <clears throat> like every you know hour or so we get one volunteer to walk around outside like in the watery aquarium park wow. uh outside of the windows in oh. this big big daddy uh thing so 
So they're not even under actual water, right? They're just like in the kind of studio space, we like could. in between the matte painting and the actual attraction. We could do you it either I mean? it way. Totally yeah. Dry. Yeah. You know what? You know what would oh. actually be pretty cool is like having it so that suit is sort of hooked up to like uh wires so that it's sort of walking with that like with less gravity like it's underwater but yeah. in creating that illusion but uh dude that'd be that's really cool. awesome i love that so much even if it's just a park employee back there who gets yeah. to play the big daddy mm-hmm. that'd be amazing i be i absolutely fun. want uh big daddy and little sister as like walk around costume characters i yes. would i would love to get and- my picture taken with them in a way, I think that they, like, story progression-wise, it might be a little bit weird, but maybe not. I don't know. We Maybe they'll be within uh, a certain attraction. Yeah, I like, mean, I mean, develop technically... Maybe the story in the attraction. I think, I think, I'm thinking back to that DLC, and I think the uh-huh. the Big Daddies and Little Sisters were, like, a, societal, a societally, like, accepted thing where it's just like, oh, it's cool for these guys to walk around. And cool. they were looked at sort of as, like, so, policemen pretty much uh-huh. so yeah we could totally it, have them walking around and it is kind of know, a cool thing like they're just kind of expected to be there so yeah and especially because they're the mascot like you have to have them somewhere in the theme park we just have to but figure yeah, out totally how like to that. not get kids impaled on that drill because that might be <laughs> a bit of a liability it's a foam it's a foam drill oh, for there we the, go uh, the huggables which is what we call the big daddies that oh, stay indoors we got it we got to <laughs> sell foam drills at the shops that'd be so cool dude and those little, um, the like, cute handmade dolls. Oh, the dolls. Of the big yeah, and there's oh. one. There's one of the songbird, songbird too in Columbia. We have to sell. Oh, it that's it. cool. I want those. I, I think they that. actually sell those like through the Bioshock store or something. And I'm there's so a lot of uh, Etsy love too. Oh yeah. yeah. If you go on, look up Bioshock stuff on and on Etsy. It's because that world lends itself to so much, so much creativity. Like it's totally an inspirational yeah game and art style and. Even though it's so dark and scary and oppressive, it still like captures some artistic part of the brain. I think every mm-hmm. for every player. We have no rides. <laughs> like, we don't really. I think have we might rides. want some rides in our park hey, full of rides. I reckon you're right. This um, ain't this ain't Epcot. We got to get some rides in here. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> um, although there are plenty of uh, museums and kind of slow paced, boring grandparent attractions in the actual rapture we don't yeah. necessarily need to replicate it one for one you know what actually i was thinking about that because i was like yeah and, uh that was one of my favorite levels in uh bioshock 2 was there's like this big like uh abandoned like sort of what's a good like the peter pan ride or whatever where you're just going or like the cat in the hat ride where you're going really slow through it and all this like animatronic stuff is keep keeps repeating the same movement every two seconds <laughs> and it's like so corny i would love to see I think it would be cool if we did that, but, like, where it's just, like, the history of Rapture, and this is how Andrew Ryan mm-hmm. built this, but then, like, uh, f- like s- partway through the ride, it starts to get creepy, where it's just, like, something goes wrong, and there's, like, a, what is it, Big Sister is the thing from Bioshock 2, which is, like, the yeah. terrifying, it's, like, the female version of uh, Big Daddy's, where uh, it's this scary, super agile diving bell lady with, like, a drill and stuff, and, uh, just like all of a sudden have it i mean that could be our uh haunted mansion where it, like the ride starts to shut down and like something's attacking the ride or something like yes. that and just get totally creepy with it dude i i love that and i love the idea of kind of going from from tension to comfort and back and forth mm-hmm. like the main common areas of the theme park like the shopping experiences the dining areas you probably don't want to be like scaring people in those areas yeah exactly um like threatening their life while they're they're shopping or whatever we right. don't want to get their like you know revenue but um so maybe the there's like safe spaces in the middle but then each of the attractions is like a little story vignette and mm-hmm. not not that every single one is like a scary attraction right but a lot of them are you know there's some dark stuff happening behind the scenes in rapture yeah and maybe this point in the storyline like they're they're doing their best to kind of quell the the rebellion and like keep things as mm-hmm. natural as normal as possible on the surface but a lot of the attractions scary stuff happens and yeah. things kind of start breaking and i was just picturing when you're talking about the animatronics breaking down it'd be cool if if you know maybe an area is flooded um you know there's like a cracked window mm-hmm. and so the animatronics are like trying to move and they're like short circuiting and like the water is getting electrocuted oh, from cool. the animatronics like there's a lot of creepy you know rapturey stuff you can do in a 
it's a small world kind of Yeah, space. you know what? Now that I'm thinking of it, I love the idea of, like, some sort of Five Nights at Freddy's thing where it's just, like, yeah. uh, where it's, like, you know, the, you keep, first of all, I love the, the tone, just the idea of, like, the tone of, like, going through this fun sort of boring ride and then all of a sudden it shuts off and something really creepy happens and then just kicks back on again it's like sorry about the delay and don't even acknowledge the scary stuff and keeps going (laughs) and then like at one point like uh seeing like realizing that one of the animatronics isn't an animatronic it's actually like a big sister or something like that and oh it could be really fun i was thinking so there's this character named uh i think it's sander cohen Find yeah. It. yeah 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 and he's like he's the uh number one entertainer in rapture where uh where he has like it's almost like hilariously absurd what he thinks art is where it's just like oh i poured cement on this person who was in agony and made them a statue <laughs> and this is art and just like really absurd stuff uh and i would love the idea of like a walk through uh, experience of like one of his art installations where it just like it just keeps getting more and more absurd and over the top because that's the whole point of rapture is there's no regulations he can literally just murder mm-hmm. people and they're like oh it's for the sake of art we're not going to stop you yeah uh yeah but uh and i like the idea of like a storyline going through that where you start to realize like you might be becoming part of the installment <laughs> or something and like your life is at risk from being here and who knows oh, that's what cool but i just i love that weird uh like uh absurd hilarious tone of like um of just terrifying things that he's doing like horrible terrifying things and he's like oh enjoy the show this is my show i put on for you and it just like treats it like it's a play or something right he actually expects you to enjoy it yeah and uh from from a top sider you know coming from terrestrial earth it'd be pretty scary stuff mm-hmm. i like that a lot and um i was just picturing like a way of maybe doing this mm-hmm. um I don't know if you want to do, like, an animatronic version of him or just, like, have it displayed on screens or something, but it'd be cool if if it's on a a slow-moving ride vehicle Mm -hmm. and there are certain parts where you get out and kind of walk over to the next part where you get back on your ride vehicle, and there's, like, a group of people. So you start out with, like, 20 people or something in the experience at a time. And then at a certain point, um, it kind of splits. The tracks kind of split, and you don't really realize it. Then the next time you get off, there's only 10 people in your group. (laughs) Oh, yeah. And then, like, it just keeps getting smaller until it's, like, just your car are the only people left and then it gets to the really scary part at the end where it seems like he's going to like you know turn you into the next art piece or whatever oh and it'd be so scary like a thing where like uh because there's the thing at the end of haunted mansion where it's like oh there's a ghost in your thing and like you see the mirror and there's like a ghost there it'd be so funny if they did like uh something that made it look like he turned the other people that were in your party into statues or something like yes changing like Oh, just the ride so photo good. and then like you oh know, yeah photoshop it to be <laughs> that's really cool oh, I love or you that. could even just have a sculpture that is the ride vehicle with four generic people in it mm-hmm. and it's like you know look what happened uh, look at my latest piece um you know the <laughs> the wax is still warm on this one or whatever <laughs> it's great be, no i love that fun. that's such a that's such a good idea especially because it's like a way to make it feel threatening without actually like putting anyone at risk or like like coming at anyone where it's just like oh guess what there's just two of you now there's a lot of those kind of sander cohen type people there's a lot of huge personalities Mm -hmm. in rapture um and i don't know if we want to storyline like make sure there's a room for them in the story because they each kind of made a a key plot point in the the overall rapture narrative Mm -hmm. i don't know if we want to have walk around characters of all of them or maybe certain employees like maybe they each have their own attraction right kind of thing um, yeah, where there's an employee like a, playing even them. like a shop or like a little uh-huh. show. Uh, now that I think there was the, uh, in the first game, there was like the observation deck of like the surgery room because the first yes. boss you go against is like this guy who's like, like is obsessed with making the perfect person perfect. through all this crazy yeah. plastic surgery and just ends up like murdering people because of it. Yes. And I love the idea of just having that be like some show you can watch where it's just like watch him perform sh- surgery on this person and all this crazy stuff <laughs> happens during it. But... That'd be cool. If it's like a special effects spectacular mm-hmm. and you know, they could even do one of those things where they pull someone from the audience and like 
like set them up with some prosthetics or whatever. Oh, yeah. So it's like, here's a spring loaded thing that's going to like pop out and spray blood on people. But, um, <laughs> you know, you're not actually going to get injured. And yeah, so many of these, so many of these, um, people were like huge entrepreneur entrepreneurs, which like mm-hmm. rapture is a big draw for like business. A lot of people did voluntarily go down there, um, in the story. It's not real. Sorry. Mm-hmm. Um, but like a lot of these people know. have their own There's companies. many worlds. So. <laughs> you're right. That was probably a different reality. Yeah. Wow. Or it could have been covered up. That's you know, true. Could still be Thanks down there. Thanks, Obama. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I've never been to the bottom of the Atlantic Ocean. It might yeah, be down there. No. Um, but a lot of these people have their own businesses, and so it makes sense for them to either have their own shop or their own company that's, you know, manufacturing stuff. If uh, mm-hmm. Fontaine Futuristics does, like, a museum tour kind of yeah. thing or, or whatever. Various. Uh, there's tons of ways for those larger-than-life personalities to be interacted with yeah with the general public because they are kind of advertising themselves and advertising their services um in the world like in canon yeah Yeah. oh that's great cool so do we have ideas for the uh columbia park because we don't have any rides for that yet yeah um i think songbird is a super compelling character Mm -hmm. creature i need a massive animatronic songbird desperately this is all i need like the uh Actually, you know what would be absolutely perfect is a big a big part of Infinite is the uh, Skyhook. They have all these yes. like rails, literal like roller coaster rails, uh, mm-hmm. connecting all the because each building is like floating independently in the sky, and they have these uh, rails that are connecting all of them. And there's a hook that you can get to jump on this rail and ride around, uh, and. Uh, and that is just a roller coaster already. <laughs> like right. the whole thing is trying to replicate. So maybe we could do like, maybe we could do one of those standing roller coasters, but like have it so you can grab up, like just having a hook that you can grab during it to make yes. it feel like you're holding on to that, even though it's not actually doing anything. Mm-hmm. Uh, but that's a great idea. That would be that's so awesome. cool for like, uh, uh, I would love, I love those roller coasters that aren't just normal roller coasters but actually have like a like the everest roller coaster that has like the massive yeti at the end of it but just have like yes a showdown with like avoiding the animatronic songbird throughout it and taking you all around uh columbia and stuff cool the premise of the coaster could like a coaster could literally be like get on songbird because we got to go to this other right. place and have like a big flapping songbird <laughs> flying yeah. around so in in the canon, is Songbird manufactured by something? Is that are there more than one? Uh, no, actually, in the canon, uh, Songbird's a bit of a mystery, just because huh. it's actually you know what I'm some because I write comics on occasion, and I have had a Bioshock comic in the back of my brain forever that I so desperately want to make someday. Uh, cool, but the whole premise is literally like the storyline's pretty much just what i assumed songbird was but it never ended up but they never actually ended up explaining like who songbird was yeah. uh cool all they do is hint at the fact that there is a person like you see a blueprint with a person inside the songbird thing but you, it's just like a blueprint it's not a specific person hmm. and then they reveal in through like a voxophone that uh that the songbird technology came from the big daddies and that's it uh so yeah so literally but songbird was just there's just one songbird and that was to protect uh elizabeth uh it who has she has like this giant which i feel like that's gonna be the sort of uh epcot ball or the like animal kingdom tree of the park is the massive angel winged statue of elizabeth that's floating in the middle of a Columbia. Columbia, that would be like yeah. a cool thing to have the <clears throat> rail roller coaster wrap around and stuff. Yes. Oh, that's beautiful. That'd be awesome. I love that, and I like the idea of having the uh, the rails kind of go in between all the different attractions. Mm-hmm. And so, like, maybe there's different vehicles you could take if you're if you don't feel like being on a roller coaster, you don't like roller coasters. There's kind of like a train mm-hmm. car that goes between them, right? Um, kind of like a cable car type of thing. Or you could also have a a faster coaster that goes in between them as well. Right. Or, or I don't know, maybe like they share the same tracks and kind of take turns operating or something. Yeah, we could have. Yeah. I, there's so much potential for like people movers in Colombia with those mm-hmm. like rails and stuff. I would absolutely love yeah. that. I think the, the tricky thing would be how do we. 
Okay, so I feel like we can't have the actual thing you're standing on moving up and down, because that would be just, like, C6 Central. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Uh, but I. But we need it to make it feel like you're in the in the cloud, yeah. not just, like, so walking I'm, around a fairground. I'm thinking literally just have buildings that are, like, sort of faux buildings that are raising up and down, like, beside you. Like, cool. on the, yeah. around the edges to create that feeling of, uh, mm-hmm. it, of you're actually moving, too. But, I uh, like that. But yeah, that would that'd pretty much do, do it. But let's not have it actually bouncing up and down because <laughs> I would yeah, hate that would that. be horrible. Talk uh, about that would the people be really who rough. working in Rapture. It's like, okay, do I want to work mm-hmm. under under the water <laughs> for six months, or do I just have to be constantly moving up and down? Yeah, do I want to be seasick or underwater? Yeah. <laughs> um, the other like thing that I, I've always like, not always, but since we started talking about this theme mm-hmm. park for Columbia, how do you make it feel like you're in the clouds like when you look down are we gonna do maybe like i was thinking we could have like a one foot thick um thing was just kind of like uh some kind of artificial like clouds like smoke kind of stuff Mm -hmm. moving around there um and it's in an area where you're not allowed to walk like the parts you're allowed to walk on are like right manufactured things like actual ground items but if you look over the railing you still see like clouds and movements and maybe you could have a a screen under there like we talked about in rapture Mm -hmm. that shows the planet earth below you Mm -hmm. you know like slowly moving or whatever that'd be pretty cool yeah i think we could pull that off we'd have to be careful with the seasick thing again um and then another thing is if you are at let's say the highest point a park guest can get to um on a roller coaster and you look over and you see the parking lot in your car Mm -hmm. and you're like wait a minute we're not in the sky (laughs) um do we want to put up like a big wall or something or like our high coasters could be VR coasters, so you're not supposed to be looking with your real eyes, like, a- out in the world anyway. I'm trying to I don't think know. If, if there's a way to do... Because, like, there's the whole thing of, like, Walt Disney, or Magic Kingdom is technically a raised park, but only, like, 10 feet or whatever. Uh, like, they built they built the whole park on a layer so that they could build build, like, all of the underground systems below it to uh-huh. like go between all the different areas of the park uh i'm wondering if we can do that but maybe even like three times that like even 30 cool. or 40 feet up to have that section of the park Dude, raised like that that's great so yeah. you could even like so from that roller coaster it, it would just be like even i feel like if you're 150 feet in the air or something you're, if you look down you're gonna be like yeah no i am in the sky and it's terrible yeah you're right and even on a re- regular ro- roller coaster that goes up high you mm-hmm. feel like you're really high in this yeah you're you're totally right that's the way to do it yeah because i was thinking about putting up a wall or like a whole like yeah. dome thing and i'm like no that's not very realistic if we can just have the real sunlight and real mm-hmm. clouds like and that'd be we so much more interesting. totally do like sort of fog like constant fog machines or something like uh-huh. these machines to make it feel like especially having having that at the bottom of the 30 feet there so you can like look over mm-hmm. and it's just like sort of like a moat of like mist or clouds or whatever oh, uh yes but yeah i i definitely i would definitely want it to be sort of have that sunlight and have that outdoors because that's gonna feel really cool yes that sounds incredible um i also like the idea of doing a another museum kind of thing up here with mm-hmm. like comstock and like the origins of columbia mm-hmm. um i don't know yeah and then the carnival, I think that kind of uh, fair type mm-hmm. atmosphere would be really cool, like barbershop quartet. All of their songs in that universe are like covers of contemporary songs or like songs that are because it takes place in 1912. But there's yeah. like here's a weird like Creedence Clearwater revival song, or here's like a Tears right. for Fears cover, and it turns out like the guy who writes all the popular songs has like is near this rift that he can hear songs from like. Alter, uh, uh, alternate timelines and stuff and so he's actually like stealing songs from the future so yeah the the riffs you were just talking about is definitely mm-hmm. something we should explore and so this musician is he just near one that's like naturally occurring or is that something that elizabeth had created There's, or like how does that whole thing work i think there are like yeah i think he he had a rift in his like house that just stuck around there's one voxophone about it where you like can get into his house and find that but there's like but even while you're walking around, like, I remember walking into this, like, blacksmith place or something, and there's just a rift there, and you walk up to it, and you can hear <clears throat> the uh, Creedence Clearwater Re- Revival song in it, and it's just like, whoa, that's super weird, and then it shuts really quick, and then later you hear 
uh, like a kid singing like a blues cover of it. Uh, and so I guess it's just like people like these riffs are randomly opening up and people are just hearing these songs, which good on them for being able to transcribe a whole song after hearing it once. But right. <laughs> He's uh, a professional. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> But yeah, there's there's it's such a cool excuse to do that stuff. Uh, but yeah. actually, you know what? So my favorite uh, my favorite ride type of all time is the uh, the which Universal has been leaning into hard, and I love them for it. Is the uh, dark ride that's like part three D, part roller coaster, all indoor, and part like uh, simulation, where mm-hmm. The Spider-Man ride changed my life as a kid. I was never that was like the, I've I have not felt that level of happiness and amazement ever since. Uh, and uh, but so what it is is like it's all indoors and you put on these three D glasses and it's like you they built like New York City in there and it's like you're going through and it's like oh you look at this screen and everything on that screen is three D and it's like Doc Ock's coming at your face with like a fire and like everything gets hot and stuff and it's so cool. And uh, with those screens, they can make it so, like, you can have all these transitions into different areas and stuff, uh, and it feels like you're moving, but you're not. Mm -hmm. So what I was thinking was it would be awesome to do a ride like that with uh, where, like, you're with Booker and Elizabeth or whatever is happening, and on some uh, mechanical whatever thing that they've built, and... uh, or even on the back of Songbird or something, but uh, have it be like this chase in this like dark ride where Elizabeth is opening up all these tears that you keep traveling through uh, to get away from these people, and uh, and so like throughout the course of the ride you're going through all these different dimensions and uh, all this crazy stuff where it's just like you go into this tear and all of a sudden an ambulance is about to hit you and you're in like the 80s and then you fly through another tear and then like oh you're like a hundred feet in the air and you start dropping and all this stuff and just the idea of like a dimension hopping dark ride just sounds like the most fun thing in the world for me oh you know what yes and i just realized that's pretty much a thing in the uh, original hanna barbera ride (laughs) simulation ride at universal they had it where you were like yeah you were jumping through it was like oh you're in scooby-doo world now and you're going through this haunted mansion but that was like just a simulation like you sit in a car and you look at the screen sort of thing but that was Uh pretty much the plot of that ride too (laughs) so that but cooler i guess that sounds awesome but um yeah. it's a shame i didn't know about that ride when we did the hanna barbera episode or else oh I really yeah reference that but i literally didn't know about that ride. yeah no that was that was classic i think they replaced it with like some jimmy neutron like uh Nickelodeon oh, ride uh i'm sure it's like all <laughs> minions now but it was pretty cool Dude, back in the day that idea is super great though the dimension hopping kind of thing mm-hmm. and you could you could do so much with that from a storytelling perspective and, like, switch things out every once in a while. Yeah, I feel that's like that really would be our, cool. like, uh, our, like, big ride. Like, that's our right. hallmark. That's what you put on the commercial. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, dude, that's that's amazing. And uh, with the that style of attraction, I think, would work well for using, like, the sky hook. And like you said, like, mm-hmm. that's the one where you fall on Songbird's back and stuff, mm-hmm. where you can, like, really change the mode of conveyance. Mm-hmm. Um Either, yeah, do, doing that or a VR roller coaster mm-hmm. where physically you're moving on this roller coaster in this pattern, but there's a story reason for that. It feels like, you know, you're being, you're sliding along the like sky hook and then you start falling and then you land on sky, on songbirds, songbirds back mm-hmm. and uh, yeah, all that kind of stuff. You can add story reasons for why the roller coaster is going through these different movements, yeah. I, which I, I really like that. We don't want to do too many of them, but right. I, I think it would work See, really well here. I'm, I'm so obsessed with, like, the thing I love about theme parks is, like, the narrative throughout it. Yes! And Me so, too! So even, like, waiting in line and stuff, like, I just love every everything <sighs> where it immerses you more. After they changed up the, like, setting, I'm... Yeah. I, they need to do that for every game now. <laughs> like, I have that I expectation so. for it. Do you have any ideas of, like, where they could put it? I think the next one should be, I like the idea of the moon a mm-hmm. lot. Mm-hmm. Um, the mm-hmm. surface of the ocean would be interesting as well. Right. Like, um, you know, maybe the remnants of 
let's say there was an under underwater volcano or whatever, the rest of Rapture got destroyed mm-hmm. and kind of like floated up to the surface, and oh. then Big Daddies have started to like reconnect them together. So there's like this huge mess of just crap, like this <laughs> fallen civilization oh, forming great. this floating island. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if you uh, can really do much from there, but I that's always... one idea or the moon. My, my, because for me, the criteria is like, it has to be super isolated, like cut off from the rest of the world. Uh, and it has to be a period piece, uh, or just another time it can be future or past. Uh, yeah. But, uh, but also like feel very like ahead of its time for whatever time that was. Uh, Uh and the one idea that I've always been like begging for since infinite came out was, uh, <clears throat> 1980s on a satellite, like just a, a satellite city in the 80s, and have that 80s aesthetic because that's honestly that sounds pretty cool. Like the, but I really actually now that you mentioned surface of the moon, that also sounds <laughs> amazing. It's pretty isolated and desolate, and mm-hmm. uh, you could set it during the same time as Rapture. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. Ooh, it, yeah. You could have like radio oh, yeah. communications, and then you could go with that totally different 1960s aesthetic of like the uh-huh. space travel, like bizarrely modern like yeah everything's all like white and glass that That sounds cool awesome that's a cool idea yeah i'm excited to see what they do with this series but oh man once they okay so let's say the the big reveal trailer happens for the new bioshock game Mm -hmm. we could immediately put in circulation in the um the like uh tearing rifts in reality attraction oh, there's yeah. immediately a new one that's rolled out to be like a preview of the coming attractions in there It'd how be pretty cool how cool would it be to have like if the first teaser for a new game was in those voxophones where they started hinting at the oh my location God. and stuff where like yeah. I, heard, I saw this rift and it was like it seemed like it was out in space or something like just really... that'd be so cool and even even just do that, like tease possible locations that you're thinking of. Mm-hmm. You know, whatever the the design team puts on the whiteboard when you tour their office, like yeah. put that in an attraction somewhere or a voxophone thing. Yeah, I love that. And, you don't even and it'd be have really to cool. Be like, yeah. it doesn't even have to be a Bioshock game. Like, it you could you you could expand that universe within the park and be like, hey, this is Bioshock canon now, and yeah. like they'd be dumb not to make a timeline. game out of it. But like, yeah, just yeah. do. It's like okay, we're gonna have a, a satellite expansion now. But that's not canon. How dare I? <laughs> It'd be fun if um you did some like maybe really cutting edge rumor releases through the voxophone things, and let's mm-hmm. say the rest of them save to your mobile device so you can go back and listen to them later. Mm-hmm. Those ones are just gone after you listen to it once. Oh, that'd so it's be like great. really like cool that's limited some edition things. stuff right there. Yeah, right. You try to post it online to like share it, like you have been doing with all the other interesting ones, mm-hmm. and it's like. Wait, where'd it go? That that new one, it said it didn't get anything. It'd <laughs> oh, be so good. I would love that, just that idea of, like, uh, the fact that people wouldn't believe you. Like, that would mm-hmm. be so, like, 1990s <laughs> of just, like, like yes. oh, yeah, I did this thing, and then this happened, and everyone's like, no, it didn't. This sounds like a couple of really cool parks. I'm totally down for it. I, I'm so excited about this park. I really want to go. I'm, um, I'm sincerely angry that I can't <laughs> go to this uh, yeah, park. Yeah, seriously. I have, and, I have such a love for the bioshock franchise and it just uh, bothers me at this point because it's like <laughs> i think of where i want the next game to be the, we mm-hmm. can't have that that's not gonna happen anytime soon think about how awesome this comic i want to make is i'm not gonna right. that's not gonna happen and now i have this other thing to add to the list of bioshock things that i love that don't exist Ugh, oh, that boy. is really rough i guess all we can do is just keep playing the game and make sure you downloaded all the dlc and <laughs> until until <laughs> they're a multi trillion dollar franchise yeah to make this i game mean or this go buy some plushes on etsy support yeah. the community but i think that yeah a franchise that keeps getting this much love is not going to die yeah. until it's really ready to die and i yeah. feel like this one's not i mean that's the fact that like the the original is so good like it wasn't like a it wasn't really a, the fact that it was novel or anything like you go play that game now and it's just like it's still hyper immersive and the world is so fleshed out and uh and the story is so good like it doesn't matter how yes. bad those graphics get it's still going to be just super good so it's like such a good foundation to build anything off of so true yeah i'm hoping it sticks around and nice. I, I'm hoping that in 15 years, this is what like English literature teachers are doing. Like, okay, kids, you have to go play oh, I would love the that. Bioshock series this summer. <laughs> That's your summer homework. 
Yeah, because, oh, I mean, great. video game, like, it's just another way of writing it. Because I was going to say, if Bioshock had been a novel, mm-hmm. it would not necessarily be, like, a classic, but it would be really compelling. And, like, it's it's really cool how many huge, like, tentpole kinds of characters there are mm-hmm. with their own internal logic. And they're all flawed in various ways, but, like, it's really cool to see how they interact with each other and how they kind of try to form society in their own image. Yeah, It's really cool. It's basically you know, what would happen in a, a world where these people are allowed to, to thrive without having to worry about, you know, the parasites and have to worry about <laughs> yeah. the government and yeah. religion. And I would, it's, it's I would recommend a Bioshock book over any Ayn Rand book any yes. time. The fact that it's I like think... actually like, oh yeah, here's this exact same philosophy and here's how it, it gets everyone here it murdered. <laughs> <And it's insane>. Right. <laughs> and I also kind of like, um, this kind of is like, referencing the utopia land we did a few episodes back mm-hmm. but it's like any any political ideology if you completely take that there's huge flaws with it like mm-hmm. no, no individual concept will work like that mm-hmm. so it's just cool to see a world where so many people are allowed to fully um maybe not perfectly but really really try to get their own vision to work and right. how they interact it's it's so cool and so compelling it and it, it's just a way a newer way of examining human thought and intention and how the real world actually kind of makes everything all messed up yeah you know what? Yeah. i think we've displayed a very thorough understanding of bioshock to the point that we would be we would be totally qualified to write some sort of comic book about it or something <laughs> so if anyone out there is listening that would might that yeah. might have that kind of authority to green light that mm. i think we proved our stuff i think that yeah we should be on a I... very short list right now I would do almost any job that needs done at, at Bioshock Infinite Worlds. Like, I would be a custodian. I oh would be gosh. installing the aquariums. I mean, look me up. It's at Spontaneous I'll, I'll on social media. I'll be whoever they're performing terrible surgeries upon. <laughs> I'll, 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 be, I'll be the outcome of those surgeries. I'll be the guy they swap out at the end. It's like, look at the monster <laughs> we made. Well, Jonathan, thank you so much for being on. This was totally. a magical and spooky experience. Absolutely. Um, so make stuff on YouTube. Make Where stuff else on can YouTube. we stalk you on social media? Uh, at Jonathan Oscar, J O H N A T H O N O S C A R. Boy, I have a dumb name. Uh, on Twitter, <laughs> that has just about everything. Go check out my pinned tweet for any. I have some comics I made on there, link to the channel. Uh, but yeah, go check that out and go check out your channel. I just dove into Aww. your channel and I have been Thank absolutely you. loving it. And it is what Aww. I am all about. All the love for creativity in this podcast is so good. So thanks, yes, man. Keep that up. I'm loving it. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. You, you have an amazing title for your YouTube, like just make stuff. Oh yeah. I want as like, broad as possible on. so I can just do whatever I want now. Dude. So good. Opposed to your, well, is, yours, yours is great. Cause I don't know what it means. <laughs> I don't know yeah, what it is. Yeah, it's Kuyomi, it's like, but yeah, it's just... It's just like my creative brand or whatever, because I don't know. It's, it, I want it to, it to be bigger than just amusement park. Yeah, so I do have right. other creative projects coming in, coming down the line. Um, but yeah, that's the home for amusement sparks on on whatever it's called YouTube. Um, <laughs> that, that look up Kuyomi. Also, amusement sparks is kind of annoying because whenever you type it in, uh, the search engine assumes you made a typo and you meant yeah. amusement parks. Yeah. So well, if you search, look up "make stuff on YouTube," and I'm sure I am a good three pages in on that one. <laughs> there's a lot of making of stuff on YouTube, right? So there uh, are the drawbacks. It's kind of hard out there, but that's why social media is so good. Like, go to somewhere else; you can just click the link. Like, yeah. come on, it's yeah. much easier that way. Cool. cool, cool, cool. Uh, that was great. Thank you so much for your time. Thanks for being on, and uh, hopefully, I'll I'll catch you at Infinite Worlds, man. Yeah. See you there. Awesome, man. Stuff. This really made me want to go back and play Bioshock. Oh, it's so And good. I've never played Infinite, so I should probably yeah. get that by now. Oh, honestly, I'm, I'm one of the people that does game, like, if there's a game that I just really love the story in the world, I will just play it on easy. Like, go back through it uh-huh. and play it on easy every time, and just, like, yeah. it is, it's such a good game for that. But That's uh, awesome. But, yeah, it's, it's so fun and immersive. And then you will definitely, you'll be even more angry about how this doesn't exist, because <laughs> it is... It really should. I might edit some of this into the conversation because this is how good, dare good chatter. You. 
I'm so sorry. I don't confidence. have your right. Yeah. I, <laughs> Never mind. I, no. <laughs> How, now every.